Okay, hey everybody. Um, we've had a, a few days break actually um, from updating or doing any work on the replica. Uh, the three monkeys business took takes precedence always from these kind of like hobby side projects kind of things and we were pretty rocking and rolling last week. So um, we didn't really get to do a whole lot over the weekend or the last part of last week. So um, today we're gonna pick up where we left off and having a few days it wasn't a bad thing. Um, the paints had, you know, a few more days to dry, which is never a problem, never, a, you know, a negative. So when we do the taping off for the red, um, you know, there's less chance of getting any um, problems with the paints. Let's say, well, they, they're not going to react with each other anyway, being that they're both of the same sort of like a solvent base. Um, but there'll also be no problems with, let's say, the tape reacting with the paint. That sometimes can happen. You might end up with a little bit of a residue um, from the tape that uh, you know gets on the finish itself, and that residue is, has a little bit of a solvent in it. That's what keeps it, you know, from drying out immediately uh, and keeps it tacky. So sometimes that can create a little bit of a problem over time. So it's not a bad thing that we've waited a while. So anyway, so now we're going to do um, sort of like the uh, the taping. Um, of the headstock and what you want to do is you want to sort of prep out first for it and get all your tape ready so I had ordered some masking tape from uh, from Jerry's Artorama which is actually where I get the paint from too that uh, Montana spray which I really like and I got some half inch and some three quarter which will be good for here um, there's also we have uh, our little printout here there's also a quarter inch, a couple of pieces of quarter inch, a couple of pieces of, well, we can kind of measure it with our caliper here for close enough. So it's a little over an eighth. Um, and then we have, I believe this that runs along this half inch piece. So you got three quarters, quarter, quarter, eighth, 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 or a little bit above. And then this strip right here, I believe is on an eighth so we're going to be on an eighth a little bit over an eighth quarter quarter three quarter half so i'm going to prep out um, some of the smaller sizes of tape um, and we're going to do that by cutting it from this strip that we have on our plexiglass here of some 3m uh, 233 mask which is an automotive mask which is really good um, so the first thing i do is to get my ruler and when you lay out the tape it doesn't always lay out perfectly straight so I would recommend doing a uh, sort of a, a primary or first cut and just kind of discard this little piece and then you'll have a straight line from which to work out. Because when you lay the tape out, it has a tendency to curve a little bit. So that's not a great thing if you want a straight line, right? So you would want to do a preliminary cut. So the first thing we're going to do, the next thing we're going to do now is cut off about a quarter inch. And I'm... I, you can measure this, you know, if you'd like to, with a ruler and get in there, you know, grab yourself um, somewhere around here. Well, we can we can use this and we can go to 250, right, and figure out where we're at. And that's pretty good right there. I mean, I've been messing with rulers for so long, I don't think I need them anymore to get pretty much where I want to be. So that's our quarter inch strip right here, okay. All right, and that should be enough to do um, those two pieces right there that we wanted to do. So I'm just going to peel this off and put it aside right here, so it's ready to go when we when we're going to tape off the headstock. Uh, the next one I want to do is the eighth, the eighth inch stripes. So I think, let's say. It's always good to trust your eye, because when things look good to you, they're usually on. So I think that's good right there. Um, I'm gonna cut that, as so. I'm gonna lift it up as before. And that should be enough to do our other two stripes, which would be, or three rather, one, two, three. Um, and then we're gonna do this other piece which is just a little bit, to my eye, just a little bit narrower. 
Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So we're going to go right about there, I think. Okay. Peel that off. And then we pretty much have our, our three stripes that we want to work with. Um, I might cut just one more of the fatter, sort of just over an eighth strip, just in case we run into an issue, but I don't think we will. Okay, so there we are. We've got our tape ready to go. Um, and then I'm going to show you how I like to lay it out on the headstock, how I like to do it so that you've got a really good example, a really photographic sort of quality example of what's going on. So let me grab um, this over here. And uh, what I've got to do this with is this little, um, it's a USB projector, it's called. This one's probably five or six years old. It's made by, who makes this thing? AAXA, AXA Technologies. Um, and what it is, is basically, uh, you put in your uh, memory stick in here, uh, you work through these buttons here to find the image that you want to do, that you want to use, and you can project it down or upon any upon anything. It also has this uh, little attachment port here, or it's a, uh, a nut, embedded nut, whatever you want to call that, insert, which is a quarter inch course. Um, so what I do is I mount that on a tripod, and um, then I can kind of raise it and lower it until the image that the camera is projecting of the headstock matches the profile of the actual headstock that I have. And the good thing with this too is that you can tilt it in various directions and move it up and down. So if, if your image is skewed, um, you can unskew it or you can reskew it by making one side longer. Let's say the right here you're going to have the heel a little bit longer. If you go this way, you're going to make the, the uh, headstock appear longer towards the uh, towards the front, towards the uh, top of the guitar. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. So we're going to use that and I'm going to show you using this. And it's best to be done in a, in a room that you can get pretty dark. Um, so I, my recording room is probably where I'll do it because that basically has no natural light in there. And um, we can sort of turn off the overhead and we can then get a really good image of what it looks like. So um, we're going to go up there and set everything up and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, and so we're back, and I'm sort of up in my mini recording room. This is kind of where I like to do, like, uh, samples of amps and listen to amplifiers through microphones and do experiments and stuff. I've got, I'll give you a little look. I've got some stuff here. It's like some old Marshalls, um, Soldanos, um, some kind of cool, um, there's a Sock Monkey in black. There's a Supro, a Tweed. Um, some recording gear, some speakers, and some tealy boxes. But anyway, the point for being up here is we got the setup going. And uh, I like to do this in this room being that it has no natural light in it. Um, so I can, you know, pretty much make it as dark as I need. Um, so we've got our, uh, which helps with projector. So we've got a projector set up, as you can see here, um, on the tripod, which is really just a mic stand where I've glued a... Um, a coarse quarter inch bolt onto one end um, and screwed it into that um, insert on the back of the uh, USB projector. So we've got that going. Um, we've got our stuff all pre ready to go here. We've got our tape cut to our widths, a pair of scissors, and a box cutter. Um, and I ended up going with all of the 3M green tape. Um, I wasn't particularly happy with the tack on that um, masking I got in yesterday. So um, I figured it'd be better just to cut some uh, three quarter and a half inch out of the green 3M 322, which has a really good tack and is really you know meant for masking for painting. Um, so in any case, uh, we've got the projector on and it's set for the headstock and I'll shut off the light and hopefully you'll be able to see with this camera sort of what we're looking at. Um, so there we have it. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking this up too well. I hope it is. But basically we have the image of the guitar um, headstock overlaid on top of the white painted um, 
headstock of the neck that we just finished, you know, shaping and sanding and spraying white. Um, so the next step really is just to add the tape um, in the exact places where the image is showing us, and that way we'll have a, a true photographic representation. Now it's a little tricky to get perfect um, because, you know, the photographs are skewed, so I've done my best to kind of middle the skew. Um, you'll notice that some of the tuner holes don't line up perfectly, but the outside perimeter does. Um, and this usually ends up with a pretty good um, guesstimation of what the headstock would have looked like. And unless you're the owner of the guitar, which I'm not, and have it laying around all the time, my only experience with that guitar is what I've seen in pictures. So if it doesn't look like the pictures, it'll look weird to me. So if the pictures are skewed, I'm of the opinion the guitar should be skewed. That may sound psycho, but that's sort of how I work. So anyway, I'm going to set down the tripod uh, that the camera's mounted on and get it in a good spot here. Okay, so we can see what we're doing. It's dark in here, so I can't really see what I'm doing. And I'm going to turn on the lights so I can sort of see what I'm doing. Um, even with the light on, I may have to turn it off occasionally just to uh, verify things. But for now, light's back on. Um, and we'll start taping things up. Um, first thing I'd recommend doing is kind of, let's say, taping down the headstock in a place so that you're not going to bump it. And the first line I lay down is the main three-quarter line. And I start at the tip of the headstock, get it centered there, and then just kind of smooth it down with my finger along the the line, right? That's a little bit high, so we'll come down a little bit more. That looks good right there. Okay, so that's our first line laid down. Second line, we're going to do the half inch. And it's great to have all these things already cut, all the tape already cut, so you don't have to do a lot of goofing around. So we're going to lay that in. That looks good there. There we go. Now next we're going to lay in sort of that thinner line. Um, take a piece off, cut it, uh, and then we can lay that line in. And a lot of his lines are burned with cigarettes, but you can sort of tell where they go still. Okay. Oop, moved it a little bit. Get that back in there. Lay it down. All right, then we'll do, uh, let's do the two quarter inch. Peel up a piece, cut it. I think we'll do the longer one first. Get it like that. There we go. Maybe a little bit more that way. Yeah, that's right. Smooth it down. Grab another piece of the quarter. Do this line, crossing it. Oops. That looks pretty good there. Lay it down. All right, and then we're going to do these um, sort of smaller eighth inch lines. There's three of them there. So cut a piece off. Lay it on the top. Get it there. Okay, that one's done. Cut itself another piece of this tape. Oop. Lay it on the top. There we go. Alright. And then the final piece at the end of the headstock. All right, so that's basically it. Now you could just kind of um, press down the tape and use your fingernail to sort of go over where the two pieces of tape sort of cross over and that'll help with any paint bleed getting under there. Um, I don't think he did this, so you probably don't have to.
I mean, I'm sure there was plenty of bleed under the tape when Unkert was painting this headstock. He probably was ordered to make it look like it was done in a hurry, even though he was doing it in a hurry. So that's about it. Um, and then we'll go ahead and uh, take our box cutter and uh, we're going to go and sort of cut around the edges of the tape um, to trim it to the exact profile uh, because obviously the sides of the headstocker is uh, all red. So uh, we're going to stop here and we're going to bring it back um, down and uh, we'll work on it on the table. So I'm going to shut off the projector and uh, we're finished for right now. Okay, so we're back at the table. Um, I'm going to turn on the light so I can see a little bit better. And this is where we're just going to kind of use the box cutter to trim down the tape. Again, uh, you know, you press it all down, get the uh, places where the tape overlaps, kind of. There, that looks good. Okay, so um, start around here somewhere. Just kind of cut it off. You know, following, carefully following the perimeter of the uh, headstock. Um, and you want a really, kind of a really sharp knife to do this with. If it's dull, you know, it's going to fight you and you're going to do damage to the paint. When they're really sharp, just like in cooking, a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp knife is. So it tends to wander and slip and not do as good a job. So get yourself, always work with a fresh blade. These things are cheap for a reason. So you can always have yourself a nice, nice sharp cutting tool. I'm um, going to work my way around here. There we go. Yep, so that's it. That's all there is to it. So now we got it all taped off and ready to go. Um, we've got our paint. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, shoot probably three coats of, um, of the red on top of this. And my advice is probably repetitive in a lot of ways, but I always recommend if you want sharp lines um, to mist the first coat on. And by misting it, it sprays it much drier. Um, and the solvent is really what it has a chance to kind of lift the tape and get underneath it. So a very wet coat, it tends to have a attack the solvent in the tape or the, or the adhesive in the tape and lift it slightly on the edges and then the paint will get under there. So if you can spray it misting coat, a dry coat first, um, it'll seal those edges of the tape and the solvent will be gone and it won't attack the glue and you'll end up with a very fine line when you remove that tape. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shoot some paint on this. Should be uh, about 20 minutes between coats. So I'll see you guys in an hour and you will do the peel. Okay. Okay, so we're back from uh, the painting. We did uh, three coats, one dry coat. And then, uh, actually did we four coats. We did one dry coat and then we did three um, progressively wetter coats. The final one was a, uh, you know, just basically a, a, a good wet coat to avoid the overspray stuff. But it's still, a, you know, it's a flat paint like we had discussed earlier. That's going to require some buffing. And you do want to get, you don't want it to be dead smooth like the red. So when you put the black on top of it and you're sort of relicking it, the high and low sort of bumps in the undercoat in the red that's over the white which also has bumps and it lead to that kind of stippled finish or stippled look that the black lines have and the red has where it looks like little pieces have sort of been removed um so it's you know you don't want a dead flat finish when you're doing this if you want it to look like the real one i mean if we're sort of looking at even the um the picture of it you can see how there's 
pieces of black missing. That could also be from trash in the finish um, or just a raised part of the finish underneath the black coat that gets knocked off first to reveal the white underneath or the black underneath or rather excuse me the red underneath and what have you. So anyway we're going to do the peel. So you do the peel basically in reverse order um, that you you know put it on obviously. So I like to use the edge of a razor blade the point of a razor blade to get at it. So you'll just kind of stick it on there and lift it up and just kind of work my way around. Should be wearing my glasses to see better, but that's life. Okay, get these off. I know this is kind of fun to do. It's like watching, um, oh, I don't know what it's like. It's like unwrapping Christmas gifts. How about that? So you get to see what's underneath. And you can see we're getting a nice sharp line um, from having used, you know, the right tape and pressing everything down um, where they meet. There's no bleed underneath. Um, a, a tip too for, uh, for your tape as well is um, when you're not using your tape, if you're using, you know, tape only for doing uh, masking on guitars or, or art projects where you're painting and things like that. A good tip is to keep your tape, let's say, in a plastic bag when you're not using it because the edge will accumulate dirt and dust and debris and that'll affect how sharp and crisp your lines are. Um, so, you know, keep your tape clean and you'll get clean lines. Clean lines, clean tape, clean tape, clean lines. All right, so we're going to continue on. Uh, Peeling. There we go. Get that one off. And then the big one. So there we have it. So now the next step is going to be, I'm going to let this dry overnight, um, and then I'm going to retape for the black line that runs through about where this tuner hole is. Um, and we've kept the projector set up in the uh, in the recording room so that we can just turn it back on and drop this in place and put the black line on it. And then when that dries and we pull the tape off, we can put it down again and put the logo on. So we're going to leave it here for now. And um, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So I'll speak to you guys later.